So let's take a look at the ear. Uh, the ear we use for hearing and also equilibrium or balance. Uh, so here, uh, both, uh, both hearing and uh, equilibrium use mechanoreceptors. And mechanoreceptors are recept receptors sensitive to mechanical pressure. So they're both, basically, they're all hair cells, and if they get touched, they're gonna send a signal. All right, so let's take a look at hearing. So this is looking at our external ear, which is comprised of our auricle, which is right there. Uh, so this is the outer funnel-like structure of the ear. And our auricle collects sound waves, uh, and it's going to direct those sound waves uh, into our external auditory meatus, or external auditory canal, which you can see there. All right, so if we go to this next picture, oh, this is a great gray owl. They don't have auricles. This disc-shaped pattern that we see of owls replaces our auricles to collect sound waves. And so owls, being night predators, actually hear their prey before they see their prey. Okay, and this is just showing that, you know, sound moves in waves and it needs a medium. So air, liquid, or gas. Uh, there is no sound in outer space uh, because there is nothing for that sound to be transmitted through. So, you know, whenever you watch a science fiction movie and you hear a ship like moving through, you know, outer space, there's actually no sound being made. Anyway, here's our oracle. We go from our oracle to this structure here, our external auditory meatus. And this is a tube that leads uh, inward towards the temporal bone. So this is the temporal bone here. And in it, it has ceruminous glands, uh, which uh, secrete cerumen, or also known as earwax. Okay. And from here, we go to our middle ear. So this is the middle ear here. So uh, this cavity there is called the tympanic cavity. So this is an air-filled space in the temporal bone. All right. And this having air here allows the tympanic membrane or eardrum the ability to vibrate. So this is the eardrum or tympanic membrane. So it's a semi-transparent membrane that vibrates when sound waves hit it. The outer layer of it is skin. The inner layer is actually uh, mucous membrane. All right. Uh, and it attaches to the malleus. There's the malleus right there. All right. Which is one of the first auditory ossicles which is the next thing. So these three guys right there are the auditory ossicles. Those are our ear bones. These are the smallest bones in the human body, okay? These three bones right here could fit comfortably on a dime. That's how big they are, all right? So they're gonna bridge the eardrum to the inner ear. So we have the malleus, which is attached to the eardrum, the incus, which is the middle one, and the stapes, which is attached to the inner ear, which is here uh, at what is known as the oval window. So uh, vibrations from the eardrum are going to vibrate the malleus, which vibrates the incus, which vibrates the stapes, uh, which vibrates fluid in the inner ear, which we'll get to. So there's a couple of muscles here that attach to our uh, ear bones be uh, because uh, these guys are going to transmit uh, these vibrations from the eardrum to the inner ear. So if we hear a loud sound, we're gonna have a reflex that's going to occur, and it's gonna cause these muscles to contract. So the first is a tensor uh, tympani. Uh, that is attached to the malleus, and then we have the stapedius, which is attached to the stapes, all right? And so when these contract, they're gonna muffle vibrations from loud sounds, all right? And we're also gonna contract these when we're speaking as well, because we can have vibrations coming up too loud, all right? All right, so we go back to this picture. This is the auditory tube right there. So the auditory tube is also known as the eustachian tube, and it's gonna connect the middle ear to our pharynx or our throat, all right? And so this allows for the conduction of air between the tympanic cavity and our throat. So most of the time, this isn't an issue, right? So the air that's around us, uh, all the way to the top of the atmosphere, actually exerts a pressure upon us and this is known as, you know, atmospheric pressure. And this is equivalent to 14.7 pounds per square inch. So if you take a two liter bottle, turn it upside down, put it on the palm of your hand, the cap is about a, a square inch. So that's one two liter bottle, add two more. That's about uh, how much air pressure is around us all the time. Now, it's not an issue unless we go up or down in elevation. So if we go up in elevation because there's less air above us, uh, so, yeah, since there's less air above us, there's less air pressure upon us, all right? So the air pressure here 
will be less than 14.7 per pounds per square inch, but here it will be still at 14.7 pounds per square inch. And so what that does is because we have unequal air pressures on either side of that eardrum, that's gonna prevent the eardrum from vibrating as well. And so when we quote unquote pop our ears, what we're doing is we're allowing air into our tympanic cavity or out of the tympanic cavity to equal air pressures here in the tympanic cavity with here in the external auditory meatus. All right, when we have equal air pressures, we get good vibration, we can hear very well, unequal air pressures puts pressure against that eardrum prevents it from vibrating as well we get muffled sounds all right so let's move on to the inner ear right here which is also known as the labyrinth so labyrinth means makes all right so if we look at the structure of this so we're cutting through in a couple different areas here uh, one we have an osseous labyrinth so that's this outer you can think of it like a shell Okay, so the outer shell there is the osseous labyrinth. So this is a bony canal in the temporal bone. And then within that, shown here in kind of this darker pink layer, is what is known as a membranous labyrinth. And this is a tube that lies within the osseous labyrinth. So once again, up here in that darker pink area. All right, there's a couple different kinds of fluid here in the inner ear. One is called the perilymph, shown here in blue. And so that is fluid between the osseous and membranous labyrinths. So in here and here and here, uh, that is perilymph. And then the next fluid is called endolymph, and that's fluid within the membranous labyrinth. So that's within here and in there. And so uh, it is a lighter pink there is that endolymph. So if we look at, we have this inner ear, we have three portions to it. We have the semicircular canals, we have this called the vestibule, and this is the cochlea. And the cochlea uh, is a portion of our inner ear that senses hearing. We look inside of the cochlea, so this is chopped inside of it. This is a blow up of that. Let's go to the next picture. This makes it a little larger right there. All right, so cut into the cochlea. We can see there are three chambers in the cochlea. All right, so uh, this chamber is called the scala vestibuli. This chamber is called the scala tympani. Both of those chambers contain perilymph. Now, this membrane here is called the vestibular membrane. It separates the scalus uh, vestibuli from the cochlear duct. This membrane is called the basilar membrane. It separates the scala tympani from the cochlear duct. So the cochlear duct is between these two scalas, and the cochlear duct contains endolymph. All right. It also contains the organ of cordy, which is that thing right there. And if we go up to this picture, this is a blow up of the cochlear duct. So this right here is an organ of cordy, also known as the spiral organ, also known as the spiral organ of cordy. And this organ contains the receptor cells for hearing. All right, so here are the receptor cells right here. These are hair cells there. So they have little hairs that stick above them. You can see right there called stereocilia, all right? Now above those hair cells is another membrane called the tectoral membrane, all right? So now we have all the parts of our ear, all right? So let's put all these parts together to look at how we hear, all right? So let's go to this picture here. So here our auricle is gonna collect sound waves and it's gonna direct those to the external auditory meatus. Those sound waves are gonna move down the external auditory meatus and vibrate the tympanic membrane. By vibrating the tympanic membrane, they're gonna vibrate the malleus, which vibrates the incus, which vibrates the stapes. By vibrating the stapes here, that's gonna vibrate perilymph within the scala vestibuli, and then that also becomes the scala tympani. So vibrating that fluid in there. Now, if we go back to this, if we go back to, uh, no, let's go back to this picture here. Here's where that scala tympani is located. So if we're moving the fluid in here, that's gonna move this, the basilar membrane. So moving fluid here, moves that basilar membrane up and down. The hair cells are attached to that basilar membrane. So when they get moved, they're gonna come up here and they're gonna touch that tectorial membrane. And so if they touch that tectorial membrane, that's gonna start a signal or an impulse along those. And then that impulse is gonna move down along the cochlear nerve here, the cochlear portion of the vestibular cochlear nerve, and then from here, 
it's going to move uh, to the auditory cortex in the temporal lobe. Okay? And that's where we're going to interpret the sound. All right? So, a couple things about this. Different sounds are going to give us different vibrations, so that's going to trigger different hair cells, you know, so that's what makes us hear different sounds. Uh, this is looking at here, here's uh, the higher notes here, we get further in, here are the lower notes. Because these uh, higher notes here at the beginning of the cochlea are uh, vibrated so often, this is the ones we have a tendency to lose more easily than those lower notes. All right. Uh, another nice thing about having two ears is this allows for triangulation, so we know where sounds come from. So if a sound came from over here, it's going to slightly hit. It's going to hit this ear slightly ahead of this ear, and so I'm going to know it came from that direction. All right. If I have one ear, I don't know which direction that sound came from. 